Welcome to today's uh, Ancient Future Bible Study on Paul, Apostle to All the Nations. Uh, today is day six, and it's the church in Jerusalem welcomes the Gentiles. Lectio. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide your listening and understanding. A reading from the book of Acts. Chapter 15, 1 through 6, and verses 12 through 21. Then certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small discussion and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they went on their way by the church. So they were sent on their way by the church. And as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and said, It is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished... Speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return, and I will rebuild the dwelling of David, which has fallen. From its ruins I will rebuild it, and I will set it up, so that all peoples may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord, who has been making these things known from, among, from long ago. Therefore, I have reached the decision that we should not trouble those Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled and from blood. For in every city, for generations past, Moses has had those who proclaim him, for he has been read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogues. After listening to the words of the church as recorded in Scripture, listen also to the words of the church's interpretation through teaching and scholarship. For the earliest disciples of Jesus, following the law of Moses was not an issue, as faithful Jews, Jesus and his disciples lived the precepts of the Torah in obedience to God's ancient covenant with, the, with Israel. The church's first major crisis came as non-Jews began to respond to the gospel and believe in Jesus as Savior. It seemed natural to some Jewish Christians that receiving the sign of circumcision, following dietary instructions, and observing other precepts of the law would be required for anyone to come into the community of God's people. If the Gentiles were to participate in the blessings of the covenant, surely they must be faithful to the Torah of Israel. Some of the Jewish Christians, especially the converts from the party of the Pharisees, sought to enforce their beliefs throughout the church. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Verse 1. Paul and Barnabas, in contrast, had seen what God was doing among the Gentiles and were convinced that Gentiles should be required to be should not be required to become Jews in order to become Christians. The crisis became so urgent that Paul and Barnabas were commissioned to travel to Jerusalem to discuss the issue with the apostles and the elders. Verse two. At this Jerusalem council. There was much discussion among the leaders of the church over these questions. Finally, in a remarkable display of unity, James defended the position expressed by Paul and Peter that God was truly a, at work in the mission of the Gentiles and that God was making of them a people for his name. Verse 14. 
he appealed to scripture to demonstrate how the law and the prophets are fulfilled as the covenant promises are extended to all people he quoted the prophet amos to demonstrate that the restored kingdom of israel would include people of all nations so that all other peoples may seek the lord even all the gentiles verse seventeen the final decree of the jerusalem council asked only four things of the gentiles that they should abstain from things polluted by idols from sexual immorality from eating strangled animals and from the blood of any creature verse twenty these are taken from part of the torah's holiness code leviticus seventeen through eighteen these minimal requirements had always bound not only the Israelites, but also the foreigners who chose to live among them. James insisted on these stipulations so that the Jewish and Gentile Christians could share table fellowship and live in harmony with one another. These prohibi prohibitions would remind the new Gentile believers that they were being welcomed into a church that was rooted in Israel and founded on the Torah. Verse 21. Synthesize your listening by responding to this question. What factors led the church leaders to their decision? Meditatio. After trying to understand the church in its formative stages, think about the implications of this passage for the church today and for your own discipleship. What can we learn from the Apostolic Council in Jerusalem about how the church is called to teach the faith today? What lessons can be learned from these apostles? And Dissension and debate seem to be a legitimate and necessary element in the early Christian community. How can disagreement and dispute be important elements in personal and communal discernment? And what can I learn from these apostles of the early church about problem solving and decision making? What principles could I apply in my own life? We can be confident that God cares about every aspect of our lives and listens to our prayer. Let us pray. God of the covenant, you began your church on the foundation of the apostles and their witness to Jesus. We are privileged to share in the tradition we receive from them and to continue to build the church today. 
May we continue to seek the truth in love. Continue to pray from your own heart. Contemplatio. After words are no longer necessary or helpful, just relax in the presence of God. After a period of contemplative silence, write a few words about your experience. Operatio. How effective am I as a witness to my faith? What can I do to invite and welcome new members into the family of Christ? That's it for today's uh, Bible study uh, on Paul. Um, thank you for joining me, and God bless. And I'll remember, God be with you until we meet again.